Hey everyone, welcome to Zero's Ham Shack. Uh, today is Monday, September 15, 2025, and as you have probably already seen, I took advantage of my opportunity to edit a whole bunch of video. Uh, but today, finally, the relay that I ordered, the final piece of the puzzle, showed up in the mail. We are in the home stretch on the SB230 GI 7B upgrade. So before we begin, just a little bit more political commentary, okay? It has not escaped my astute observation that uh, the political commentary that I injected into my last video caused a number of you to unsubscribe from my channel. That's okay. I'm okay with that, right? Obviously, I have made known my beliefs. And if you and I cannot have a rational discussion and allow and, and have a reasonable discussion between the two of us as to why I have the beliefs that I have or why you have the beliefs that you have, which is the only thing that Charlie Kirk encouraged, open, di open dialogue, nobody makes progress, all right? Um, I have people that I don't agree with. They are still my friends. However, if you do not wish to be my friend because of my beliefs, then I will say to you, please do not watch the rest of this video. Please unsubscribe now. Please, when you leave, do not let the door strike you in your gluteus maximus. Do it now. Save us all some time. Okay? I can take the hit. I'm a big boy. And if you'd like to have a discussion about why I believe what I believe, or if you would like to share why you believe what you believe, I would love to have that discussion. So the door is always open. Uh, I do not wish to shut the door on people needlessly. But again, if you're one of those who simply cannot accept anyone else's ideas, then you don't belong here. I don't want you here. Leave now. Okay, that's it. In this first picture here, this is the relay that I ordered. And in this picture here, this is the relay that I'm trying to replace. The relay that I ordered is probably 20 to 30% larger physically than the relay that I'm trying to replace. However, uh, there should be no problem. I have plenty of, plenty of room for the new relay, uh, but the real problem is, and it's not really a problem, but uh, the, the, uh, the one thing I did not expect was that the center post of the coil for the relay, if you see this photograph looking at the bottom, is not, uh, is not drilled and tapped. And the original relay sits atop a threaded, uh, threaded bushing, or a, 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 a bushing with a screw. Uh, so it sits like on top of a tower. So um, I'm going to have to uh, pop the case off, drill the center post out, and tap it to 632. Not a problem. going to get on it right now. As you will see from this next series of photos, I did successfully manage to get the, uh, the new relay installed in place of the old relay. It is substantially larger. I was able to successfully squeeze it in there and, and get it wired. did uh, take... Uh, moving a couple of things around uh, uh, compared to where they were, but everything works perfectly. And uh, the, uh, I, am, I am reassured that the wiring that I put together in the first place was correct. And I changed nothing other than to, to uh, put in the new relay. So I'm very pleased about that. I uh, ended up drilling and tapping the center post of the relay and mounting it atop the, the little uh, bushing 
or the actually the tall bushing that holds it in place in front of the uh, the connectors there so yeah ready to rock and roll next up is to goop up the heat sink put it on and uh, do the final assembly of the tube to the heat sink yay all right got my tube of uh, actually they call this silicone free heat sink compound type 3 range 40 degrees C to 200 degrees centigrade so um, I don't know if it's better than silicone or not as good as silicone that's what I got and we're gonna go for it So I know that I, I don't need any directly around this window except for the very bottom here. And I also know that when I compress it against the back panel, it's going to squeeze out. That's, that's okay. I, I will clean up the mess afterwards. All right, here we go. Now. The top screws that hold the heatsink in have got these little angle brackets that the uh, cover for the RF enclosure sit on. So I'll put those in first. I have got just a little bit of uh, heat sink compound oozing out from around the edges here, so I'm just going to, uh, yeah, actually, yeah, let me, uh, let me clean this up a little bit. I will do a final cleanup at the very end with a solvent to uh, get rid of all the, the oozing, but um, this oozing is not finished. It takes time for it to, to migrate out to the edges, but I did get the, the bulk of it. And now, now it's time to do the beryllium oxide block, copper, all that. Yeah, getting close there, folks, getting close. I'm liking this a whole lot.
All right, so the tube is installed. It is clamped against the heat sink. It is all gooped up. I was initially concerned that the heat sink compound did not ooze out from the bottom side of the half inch block against the, the one and a quarter by one and a quarter. So I took it apart a second time and made sure that there was a substantial amount of thermal compound to carry the heat away. Now I'll clean up the rest of it. But uh, yeah man, that looks good. That looks really good. And there you have it, the tube socket mounted. A little bit of uh, finish up wiring to uh, connect the the uh, high voltage choke to the uh, blocking capacitor and from the blocking capacitor over to the anode of the of the GI-7B. I should also note at, at this point that uh, GI-7B is not the only tube that will go in here. Uh, GS-9B, which uh, is a little bit lighter duty, but uh, higher a higher gain tube will also fit in there. So, um, if you ever have uh, a GS9B laying around, would work just fine in this as well. You, you would actually need <clears throat> just a little bit less drive. And that's going to do it for now. Uh, right now, the, uh, the amplifier is turned on, the filaments are on, the tube is gettering, which means that it is restoring the vacuum. I will allow it to getter for about 24 hours. I do not rush this step because I've seen what happens when you don't get her. It, it gets you <laughs> in the gluteus maximus. Um, it, will, it will actually arc inside the tube if all of the air has not been uh, reconstituted to some other form inside and, and re, reforming the vacuum. So um, it will be, it will be uh, gettering for a while and uh, I just have a few more wiring connections to make. I have to calibrate the potentiometers for the front panel meter. I just double check the high voltage reading and it is right on the mark. So I'm happy about that because that requires actually changing resistors if I need to. But uh, the, uh, the plate current and the grid current are adjustable now with the potentiometers that I have in there. So I will uh, calibrate those and um, yeah, like I said, a little bit of extra wiring in here to connect the anode to the uh, to the high voltage plate choke and the blocking capacitor on the first input to the uh, Pi network and uh, ready re be ready to test. It's ready to rock. I'm, I'm. Can you tell I'm excited? I don't know. Have I, have I mentioned that I'm excited? Okay. Um, that's it for now. Thanks all for joining me. Hope you uh, hope you are enjoying the series. As always, please rate, share, comment, and subscribe. And peace, everyone. I mean that sincerely. <laughs>